the reason I'm doing that is we will provide this slide deck as well as the recording from this evening's presentation uh, on our county OR3 website. Uh, so that if folks weren't able to attend, you'll be able to go there to find out more information. Uh, we're going to have a short presentation by PG&E this evening. Um, I'll let them introduce themselves in a moment. And then we will have a question and answer period for, uh, for any specific property questions or general program questions. There's two ways in which you'll be able to ask a question. Uh, we do have the question and answer function active, so you can put uh, type in a question there, um, or you can raise your hand. So uh, there should be a little hand function at the bottom of your screen um, where you can click on that hand to raise your hand, and then we will uh, call on folks and unmute you and allow you to ask your question of pg &E. So with that, um, I'm going to hand it off to uh, Rob Morris from pg &E to introduce him and, and Joel, and, and we'll, we'll get started. All right. Thank you so much, Dave. Appreciate it. Hello, everyone, and, and thanks for joining us today. Um, my name is Rob Morris, and I'm the senior manager here in the Central Coast for pg and &E. I also have Joel Smith with me, and he's our vegetation management supervisor, and he'll be uh, helping to answer some of the questions uh, that you might have at the end of this presentation. So like I said, I wanna thank you uh, for joining us today to talk about a new approach we're going to be taking to address the vegetation that's left over after the wildfires that had been so devastating in our county. Um, all of us here tonight recognize how important it is that pg and &E do its part to help the community recover. And following the CZU fires, in our efforts to restore power quickly, our crews and contractors address the vegetation concerns um, as quickly as they could uh, to that posed a safety concern uh, or a hazard to our equipment. And since then, we've been listening to our customers and communities and recognize that our actions in the aftermath of this disaster were a burden to those already experiencing uh, just amazing hardship. So in response to that feedback, we're, we've been returning to private property where pg and &E cut down the trees for safety following the wildfires um, and reviewing for wood debris removal. So in the spirit of partnership and collaboration, um, we're here to talk about solutions and to answer your questions and give you an opportunity to voice your concerns. We wanna do right by our customers and the actions and, um, and these actions reflect the commitment of all the parties to come together and find solutions. We're working closely with the County of Santa Cruz and wanna thank them for their partnership and support in informing the residents about this program. It's important that all impacted landowners are informed of this program and that those who wish to participate have an opportunity to do so. So I would encourage you if your neighbors, um, if you talk to your neighbors on a regular basis and they're not aware of this program, please pass the word. We've done everything that we can uh, with letters and outreach to contact as many people in the area as we can, but we know sometimes uh, those, cost, those uh, landowners no longer in the area or are sometimes difficult to reach. So if you have contact with them, please let them know about this program. So let's go to slide two, Dave. Great. So following the CZU lightning complex fires, uh, pg and &E crews and contractors worked to quickly and safely restore power to customers. This included inspecting and cutting down hazardous trees that posed a potential safety risk to, uh, to our crews and our equipment. Um, after completing the tree work, uh, as part of our wood management program, crews chipped the wood that was less than four inches in diameter and spread those chips on site. And this is sort of a standard process. Um, and we did this wherever possible. At that time, we did not haul off the wood debris that we cut in response to the, the fires. So let's go to the next slide. Um, so now what I'd like to speak to you is what landowners can expect as part of this program. So we've begun returning to private property where we cut down trees for safety, following the wildfires and removing uh, large diameter wood debris with landowners approval. We're pleased to share that we can now do this work for landowners in the CZU Lightning Complex footprint of Santa Cruz County as well. So we're committed to engaging with the landowners and completing this work as soon as possible. We really wanna get this done. 
So, uh, so we know the timeline for wood removal is dependent on weather conditions and the ability of our crews to safely access and remove the wood. And the wood removal, some of it may require permitting or additional safety precautions or planning may require additional time and review. So uh, take that into account, but we do wanna get this done as quickly as possible. Um, okay, let's go to the next slide. So it's important that landowners inform to the program and have the opportunity to opt in. So we've been reaching out, as I said earlier, directly to landowners requesting their permission to remove the wood debris because we do need their permission to do that work. Where possible, we've left door hangers and placed phone calls and sent letters with permission forms uh, to about 1,200 impact, impacted private property owners. So we've also reached out to the local media to help spread the word about the wood management program. And currently in Santa Cruz County, we've identified more than 1,200 parcels that may have wood debris remaining on site that we cut down and uh, that are eligible for this program. Currently, as of today, we've had 180 of those parcels opt in for the wood removal. And again, we do need those customers or landowners to contact us and give us uh, approval to remove that wood. All right, let's move on to the next slide. So as I said, landowner, landowner approval is required um, for anything that's larger than four inches in diameter and essentially legally belongs to the property owner. Um, so those that would like to participate can email a completed permission forms to wildfirewoodmanagement at pge.com. Um, but the easiest way is they can complete the form online via the Santa Cruz County website by going to the debris removal, de removal section and clicking PG&E Woodhall Program. Uh, Dave and the county team did an amazing job putting this, this site together. It's super easy to use. You enter a little bit of your information, you sign it off giving us approval, and it goes right into our mailbox. It happens really quickly and it's super easy. So really appreciate the partnership with the county on that. And so one of the questions we get asked a bit is, oh, I don't know, I, I have all the information to complete the form. I don't know how big these logs are. I'm not sure if there's some extra trees out there. You know what, we just want to get out there and get notified that you want the trees removed and give us the best information you can. We'll go out there and then we'll, we'll determine what we need to know at that point. So really, if you, if, if you want the trees or you want some of this wood removed, contact us, um, give us the most, the best accurate information that you've got and we'll, we'll, we'll come out and do the rest. So let's, um, and you can see on this, uh, that slide, the, the, the form is pretty, pretty quick and easy to do. So uh, we wanna make it as simple as possible for you. We know that you've got a lot of other things on your plate and I just can't even imagine uh, the stress and, and what, you, what you've gone through over the last year and a half. All right, let's go to the next slide. So if you have questions about the wildfire mitigation and response efforts, you can mail us um, at wildfire safety, that's all one word, at pge.com. It's real easy, wildfire safety at pge.com. So if you have questions, concerns, et cetera, that's really the best way uh, to, to get that to our team. Um, in addition, you can also call 1-877-295-4949. Uh, Again, that number 1-877-295-4949. Landowners who believe PG&E caused damage to their property during or following its wildfire response efforts, which they should be compensated for, well, you can submit a claim and you should do that through our claims process. And that's uh, pge.com and then slash claims. So if, if you believe that there's damage that was done um, due to our tree removal on your property, uh, go ahead and, and uh, fill out a claims form and our claims, uh, it'll go through our claims process and the, a claims uh, representative will contact you. So it's pretty straightforward. You know, go online, fill out the application and uh, we'll have our team come and, come and visit you and, uh, and uh, remove uh, the, the, the debris that was out there that uh, PG&E cut down. So, um, I mean, that's really the formal presentation. Um, at this time, I do have Joel Smith who 
is is the expert on this. And uh, between Jewel and I, I think we can answer most of your questions. So happy to happy to start answering questions. All right. So we'll start with uh, Alan. Your hand is raised. Um, I'm going to uh, ask you to unmute, and you can ask your question. I don't know if Alan can get on. If not, he could type in his question. Yeah, we'll Alan, Alan has typed in one of his questions. Uh, he stated, I originally signed up via email or cut down for the cut our cut down trees to be removed, but did not receive a confirmation. Is there a way to check that we are registered with pg e for tree removal? Great question. There is a way to check, and probably the best way is to, to email that wildfire um, email that was on the screen previously that um, you saw there. So, or you could call that the, the phone number as well, just to check. Yeah, good question. We wanna make sure that we do capture that and you don't feel like you're, um, that you've been forgotten. So please, uh, wildfire safety, which is one word at pge.com or 877-295-4949. Um, give them your name, your address and uh, that you've done that and uh, that you uh, put the form in and uh, they can give you any updates. All right, well, well, let's see if we can get Kathy Wilcott to unmute. Um, Hello? Go. Yes, hi, Kathy. Oh. Right. <laughs> um, trees were cut along Lodge Road and pushed over the side. Therefore, they ended up on my property. And um, they're just sort of were pushed over helter skelter. And then a big rainstorm came and Lodge Road failed. And a lot of mud came down along with a lot of trees. It's a mess. <laughs> what do I do? Kathy, I appreciate you bringing that concern to our attention. Do you, and again, uh, do you know that these trees were associated with PG&E's wildfire response operation, or do you, do you have PG the history there? PG&E was up there. The county was up there. I think other people were up there. We went up, we tried to talk to um, a forester, and we talked to a supervisor with PG&E who said they would take care of everything and they wouldn't leave a mess. Sounds um, like some. <laughs> so I don't Thank know you, where Kathy. Yeah, yeah. Trees, trees above Lodge Road were cut and pushed over the side, I believe. Trees along Lodge Road were cut and pushed over the side. And over the side is my land. And I don't Got know it. that it's safe to get them out. I don't. We'll definitely have to look into it. I apologize that it's been a, a long time for you to get the answer that you need. And we'll definitely have people take a look at it. We have folks in the field uh, every day. Um, now, so we can have some a customer specialist come over the, and meet with you and 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 look into the situation. Um, okay. And it sounds like sounds like we may again. It sounds like trees that may have been owned by someone else were felled and then left on your property. They might. If that's the case. Been. Yeah, if that's the case, we would we would want to resolve that as well. Okay, so Tracy, can you um can you email? I think I, I don't want to have you uh, put your name, phone number, and all that information out here. If you could email wildfire safety at pge.com with your information and your concern, um, uh, I'll I think Joel can follow up uh, on that, um, and that way we'll have that information available to us. Okay. Does that work? Yeah, I can email you, and then we'll have to make a date to go out there. That sounds good. Thank you, Kathy. That sounds good. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, and, and as Joel said, we'll have to determine, you know, I mean, it's, it sounds like it's a, a bit of a, a problematic situation. And we'll have to determine how those trees got there, who cut them down, et cetera. So right. we'll, work, we'll work with you on that for sure. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Um, before we get to the next question, I, I wanted to at least recognize that we do have representatives from County Supervisor Bruce McPherson's office on the call this evening, listening in, as well as uh, Supervisor Coonerty's office and the office of Representative Anna Eshu. So appreciate all of them being on the call as well um, as we have this conversation. So Yana um, has her their hand raised. Um, so we're gonna see if Yana, you can unmute. And there you go and ask your question. Um, thank you for taking my call. I um, also just wrote it on a chat. 
I live on a private lane in Bonny Doon. And when the tree work was being done, at one point they brought in some pretty heavy tractor equipment, the types that have those long wheels that are metal. And instead of bringing it in on a flatbed, they let the, uh, that piece of equipment road, drove itself up the road. And it did a lot of damage on the um, shoulders of the road. And it wasn't that long ago that we had our road repaved and now it's all torn up again. And I'm wondering since it's a, uh, we don't have an official HOA for road work. I have to pull everybody together like herding cats that aren't very happy to collect the money to repair the road. So I'm wondering how we would submit a complaint to get that section of the road repaired where it was, where it's pretty damaged. I, I can answer that. So it sounds like that's a potential claim. If that is something that are during the wood removal, PG&E did some damage, um, mm -hmm. and it was indeed us, then that is, uh, that is something that we expect you to file a claim for. And so if you go ahead and put the information that you've got, um, any documentation that you might have, uh, you can go into uh, the PG&E website uh, pge.com slash claims and uh, and then uh, enter the enter the best information that you have along with your contacts and somebody will get a hold of you. I'm not sure if Joel wants to add anything else to that, but it, it's a pretty straightforward process and and you, you definitely should do that. Okay. Ryan Coonerty, if you're on, I believe I sent your office some photographs right after it happened and it would be great to get those back so I don't have to go digging for them <laughs> if you can hear me but anyhow I'll do my best to pull that together thank you All right. thanks Yana. Um, we have a number of questions written out so I'm going to go ahead and, and read a few of those just so that everybody can hear um, the answer and in, in the in the question uh, we have another question from Nicole similar to issues raised prior but they, I filled out the form several times, once last summer and again recently on December 8th via the county website and after I received a call from PG&E representative to do so. I haven't heard, I've heard nothing even though I have a huge pile right next to my driveway on my build site and you've returned to my neighbor's land yet no one has engaged with me. Um, I want this done. What more do they have to do to get this work done? So. I don't know where Nicole lives, but maybe Joel or Rob, you can articulate um, that some of this work has already begun. Uh, and that might be why it's happening in their neighborhood. Yep, that's correct. So we wanted to start off um, carefully and to take the appropriate steps to make sure we're coordinating with the county and make sure that we are, are doing our best to avoid any environmental impact or unnecessary environmental impact. So it's going through the environmental review process right now. And as those locations are getting released to us in operations, then we're we're initiating that work. We did start. We started just before the storms hit. The big storms shut us down for a little while because the soil saturation was too high, and and the conditions were just not good and safe for us to work out there. Um, now that that's cleared, we we did initiate um, our wood management activities again on this Monday. So I, hopefully we'll be getting to your property soon. But again, I. I it probably would be best for you to email the, the wildfire safety email just and you know put your um, location information in there so that we can provide you with an update. It may be that your your property or the wood on your property might require some additional environmental review before we um, tackle that. Yeah, to, to Joel's point, if you could go ahead and, and send that because otherwise I would just have you give give us your information. But I don't want to do that. If you could send that, um, we'll uh, we'll be looking at at any communication over the next day or so that comes in through there and and, uh, and and tag it and make sure that we follow up. Um, and, and quite frankly, I think that just by hearing a couple of these uh, requests, I think that uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna look back at, at what we're doing right now as far as um, communication and see if we can improve that uh, as far as letting people know when we're gonna when we're coming out, or at least letting them know that we did get their request and, and here's the timeline and what the next steps will be. So um, I'll, I'm gonna work with our communications team on that. Um, I'm not sure what it looks like yet, but I am, I'm hearing that uh, there's a little bit of frustration. So we'll, we'll, we'll address that. Um, just a quick follow-up to that. 
uh, Rob, I know this has come up in some of my conversations as well. There were a couple iterations of the form before we put the form up on our website um, that may have been out there either provided by PG&E or, or otherwise. Um, what is your recommendation on if somebody filled out a form during the summertime, should we make sure that they fill out the form that's available online through the county's website or would those older forms suffice? I'm going to defer to Joel on that. You know, I hate people to do double work, but I want to make sure we've got everything captured. So Joel, what are your thoughts? I think we can use the previous forms. Again, I don't want to have folks go through the exercise again. And ultimately we just need to know the intent of a landowner. To, and if, you know, if, if you if the, if our customers want us to take the wood off their property, then that's what we want to do. So we, it's basically just a communication mechanism. And again, like you said, Rob, we don't necessarily have to have, you know, perfect detail on the form, just do your best to fill out the form. And then, you know, we can come and do the you know, assessment. Uh, but if it was a previous version of the form that was filled out, that that's fine. As long as we, as long as we know, and if we don't know, you know, we're going to continue to reach out. But if, I, again, Rob mentioned that we're going to um, look into some improvements as far as the communication, just maybe send some kind of confirmation that could be a potential option. But if, if you haven't heard anything, um, and you see wood management operations going on in, in your area, then please feel free to reach out to that, either the wildfire number or the email address and just ask for confirmation and we can make sure that we um, do have what we need to, to start the process for your property. Please. Um, before we get to the next question, what I'd like to do is I'm gonna share my screen and just really quickly, I know Rob has mentioned this and I appreciate his mentioning. I'm just gonna walk through from the county's website, if everybody can see that county website, where to get to this form uh, so that this is all be recorded as well. But if you come to the county's website, if you're not familiar, you can go under the departments tab. And if you scroll down, there's the Office of Response, Recovery and Resilience. That's my office. If you click on that, it comes up with this web page. If you come into recovery and then you come over to debris removal and you click on that, on the left-hand side here, there's a PG&E Woodhall program menu item. If you click on that, it brings you to describing the, the program. And then you just click on this owner opt-in permission form. As, uh, as Rob said, you provide some basic information here, your parcel eight information, your best estimate of tree information, and then it will automatically email that completed form. It's a DocuSign system. So you'll DocuSign the form digitally. You don't have to print it out and then scan it, and then it'll uh, send it automatically to that website uh, or that web email address that Rob mentioned. So just wanted to go through that for everybody on the call uh, so that you could see where that is. So I'm going to stop my share, and then um, I'm going to ask uh, on behalf of Becca Moeller um, another question, Rob and, and Joel. Um, Rebecca, or Becca's question is, um, what is pg e doing with the wood that they are taking away? That's a great question. Currently, yeah, currently we just have it staged temporarily in Felton, um, but we are looking into the best option for the you know, long-term life cycle of the wood. Um, we do have some potential options to, to process it to, into chips and then have it just um, staged locally at, a, at basically at willing landowners' properties. You know, again, we, we do have certain environmental restrictions that you know, there are sudden oak death related requirements that govern what can go out of the county because this is a, a quarantine county and then also again we you know we don't want to necessarily increase our carbon footprint here and and ship it off to you know remote biomass facilities so we're looking at the the, the greenest and most local options first before we end up going out of county some of it i should disclose that some of it did previously go to the santa cruz county landfill when it the landfill previous um, previously when we did some wood, wood removal in the coastal zone i believe that may have been turned into uh, landscape materials i'm not quite sure what happened to it after we took it to that facility Right. Uh, next question from Luke Bailey. Uh, I'm aware my application has been received. Since I now live in Hayward, how will I know when crews come to work on my property? I would like to leave some wood on site and have some hauled away. That's a great question. That's definitely something that we should be in communication with you on because we don't want, it is your property. We don't want to take wood that you need or, or want for other uses. So please do contact us via the phone number or the wildfire email address so that we can have that conversation with you. 
and make sure that we have a, a probably it would be best to have a team member meet you on the field and clearly designate what you want to have hauled away and what you would like to have left. Yeah, I clearly identify that with all, all the information that you can supply on, uh, on the email uh, along with uh, the request to, to meet in the field before, uh, before any removal is done. So it's, it's very clear. Um, Kay, uh, Todd has a couple questions here. The first one I think is um, yeah, an interesting one. Some of the trees from our property were cut and they are stacked on a neighbor's property. Who has to give permission to clear them away? Hey, you, hi Kay, uh, you do. And because it's your property and that was, uh, again, you know, post fire, sometimes the fence lines aren't there. Sometimes there were never fence lines. So sometimes we, our crews didn't always know where to leave, where to appropriately leave the woods. So, you know, they may have inadvertently staged wood on an adjacent property. So it's your, you know, your property still. So we would need to talk to you. You would need to release uh, that particular wood so that we could take that away. Unless you're, unless there was an agreement between you and your neighbor and your neighbor happened to want it, you know, that would be separate. But if you don't want it and, and it's your property, then we would, we would also take it off of your, your neighbor's property as well. All right. Kay had another follow-up question that I think you've, you've touched on, but just for folks who may come have come in a little bit later, uh, they say, we tried to count the trees today, but some are whole trees. Others are cut into thirds. I'm giving the estimate for numbers to include all of that. I hope that's okay. I know Rob, you said doing the best you can, but but just to yeah, yep. doing the best you can is 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 all we're asked. I know that Joel's team. Sorry, I have dogs in the background. Um, Joel's team uh, is it will come out and visit the site, and then they can they can determine from there. Okay. Um, J W has a question. Um, I think this is around claims. Um, if PG&E disputes their culpability, is there a mediation process? I could, I might could take that just from personal experience. I'm, I'm not a, I'm not in our claims department, but there is an escalation process. So ultimately, we want to do the right thing, and if if we did impact unintentionally cause damage, you know, we want to rectify that. We want to make that right with our customers. So. Again, we can you know, work through that process. I can say this, you know, the claims are, are my claims counterparts will get involved in those discussions, but they also pull in folks like me from operations to make sure that we you know that the full history is available and that we do our best to, to look into what actually happened. It, it, it sometimes gets tricky because like we've mentioned, there've been a lot of uh, operate, a lot, of, a lot of different entities operating within the CZU fire footprint, but we will do our best to to dig into the history and figure out what we may have impacted and then, and then make do our best to make that right. Yeah, we definitely want to do right by our customers. If we've caused damage or, or uh, problems on the, on the property, we do want to want to get that fixed. So, and we do have a really good claims team and, and they're committed to doing, uh, doing the right thing and uh, certainly looking out for our customers. So. Um, Becca has a really interesting question. Um, for those of us with huge amounts of logs that had to come down, but were not taken down by PG&E, can we also take those logs to the staging place and have them part of this, quote, green solution? It's our intent to take just the, to provide wood management for just those trees that we that PG &E felt during our operation, we know that sometimes it gets a little bit tricky to tell. But you know, there's going to be you know some situations where we may end up picking a little bit more on one parcel, picking up a little bit more wood on one parcel, picking up a little bit less wood on another parcel, just because things got shifted around after we did our initial uh, hazard tree mitigation work. But in general, if it's known that trees were cut by other entities and staged by other entities, then we would not be. Uh, providing wood management services for that particular wood. And I think maybe maybe what Joel, we can monitor uh, on our side uh, at the county side with you is if you do come up with a local green solution, right? Rather than, as you said, trucking out a county and, and maybe there's a vendor that wants to come in and process it for some means. If we know that, if the if you let the county know that solution and that vendor or that solution is scalable, and they're interested in taking more information, more material, 
maybe we can work towards Becca's solution of trying to find a, you know, a, a sustainable solution for, for other trees. I think that's kind of what she's getting at. So if you can just let us know if you come up with that magical solution, I don't know what it might uh, be. Uh, absolutely. That sounds like a great partnership. And I apologize. I may have missed the spirit of that question. That sounds great. And we'll definitely stay in communication on that. Thank you, Becca. That's a great question. Um, and then we have a question from Kendra. Is there any estimate of how long it will take to complete this process in the Santa Cruz Mountains? The trees cut on our property is currently prohibiting our ability to complete work on our well and inhibiting progress on our rebuild. So you have case by case, there's going to be situations where it's really urgent for us to do the wood management. And you please, again, get in touch with us, call the, call the, the wildfire number or email the wildfire email address so that we can have those specific conversations with, with you, with our customers, and make sure that we prioritize that work appropriately. We do want to, we want to make sure we're not getting in the way of folks rebuilding. Uh, overall effort, it might take some time. Some of the, you know, this is our initial phase, our initial pass to get the, the most uh, kind of straightforward uh, wood management operations done. You know, some will require additional permitting with the, with um, the various agencies that are involved. Some of it may require additional special equipment that might take longer. Um, so it's hard for me to make a commitment as far as the overall timeline. We hope to get, you know, as much as we can done by the next fire season. Um, but some of it may go a little bit longer, but certainly if there's an urgent need uh, for a customer to, to have us help out to um, support their restoration on their property, then we certainly will do our best to accommodate that. Yeah, certainly, hopefully, you know, on, on behalf of the county, we'd love to see you be able to prioritize if, if all of the permitting requirements are made for those folks who are trying to rebuild. Absolutely. So, so if, if Kendra, if you can make sure to reach out and articulate that, it's in impeding your ability to, to proceed with your rebuild. Um, I'm sure hopefully PG and can move forward in that um, provided there aren't any permitting constraints. Um, I do wanna reiterate uh, again, for those who came in late that, uh, that the opt-in period for this program is ending at the end of this month. So in just a few short weeks. And so I wanna to vocalize to all the neighbors, all the community members on the call that the county, our supervisor's offices, our public information officer, pg &E, we are trying to push this information out in as many different ways as we can to get as many folks to opt in to the program. But oftentimes it's neighbors talking to neighbors. Um, and you may know as a neighbor where your neighbor, you know, we had. One resident say they're living in, in Hayward right now, um, but whatever we can do uh, and whatever you can do to remind your neighbors to opt into this program, uh, to take advantage of this opportunity to get the wood removed, um, we wanna encourage folks to do that from the county side and certainly uh, Rob and Joel have expressed that, uh, that willingness to do, to get as many people into this program as possible. But if you don't do it by the end of the month, um, then we, we, you miss that opportunity, so. I just want to make sure that's really clear uh, to everybody on the call. Um, so Shirley just asked a question. Um, another company, uh, Anvil, which was the state contractor for phase two debris removal, um, also did some tree cutting. How can we know whether the mess is PGEs or Anvils? So let me start, and then I'll and then I'll and I'll go to Rob or, or Joel. Um, Anvil was required by state law to remove their trees. So by and large, there should be very few instances where they left those trees. However, there were different spray painted colors on trees and there's an inventory. So I will hand off now to Rob and Joel on that side, uh, just to confirm some of their, their identification features. So Joel, yep. can, Joel can definitely speak to this. Sure. Yeah. So we we have a we used a database to track the work that we identified during the initial fire response. So we we have that. It's in a database called Collector, and that'll help us confirm what's on the ground. That you know, basically is our responsibility. And then we did mark the trees. We painted a, a P1 on trees that were immediate threats to our facilities or to to personnel in the area, and a P2 on those trees that were um, you know. Uh, impacted by the fire and either dead or, or um, on their way out. 
but weren't an immediate um, hazard to the facilities, but had to be addressed in a, in a timely fashion. So those trees would be again marked with a P2. So if I remember correctly, it was green, kind of a fluorescent green spray paint. So it should have either P1 or P2 on it if it was addressed by PG operations. Now, I, there are some caveats. There might be from time to time situations where uh, we, we, because of the hazard of a given tree and maybe it had been burned so severely, it was you know ready to ball over. Um, and we just ended up having to either push it over with a cat or something like that or pull it over. So we may not even even have been able to mark trees in that case. And you know those could still be associated with our activities. So again, there might be a few here and there that don't have marks on that that belong to PG&E that we would still be responsible for. But by and large, they should be marked with a P1 or a P2 if they were part of our additional response effort. And in doubt, fill out the form. Yep. We'll, when PG&E will be able to access that database to confirm. So surely, just uh, um, fill out the form online uh, through the county's website. Uh, just to make sure and they can double check. Um, if there, uh, actually, it looks like we've got um, another hand raised. So Andrea uh, Tischler, if I'm pronouncing that right, you can unmute. There you go. Me? Yep. Yep. Oh, good. OK, um, well, I really appreciate that uh, PG&E is going to uh, make a good on their uh, uh, free removal, uh, yet uh, after those trees are removed, the uh, habitat, uh, uh, the uh, land on which uh, those trees were uh, growing are now, of course, gone dead. There's just stumps. I wonder if pg &E has uh, uh, any commitment to, uh, besides the tree removal, to a habitat restoration I'm concerned uh, primarily about debris flows and so forth, because now with uh, all those dead trees, uh, like uh, out in, you know, in the CZU fire area, there's going to be a lot more in the years to come, a lot more uh, debris flows and so forth, because there's nothing growing there. There are no new trees that are being planted by PG. They're removing the old trees, which is great. I mean, th those things are, you know, just... Uh, another fire uh, waiting to happen, more, more fuel for another fire, but there's not going to be anything there. The, the hillsides are going to be bare. And that's the case in, on my property where uh, 80 uh, trees were removed by PG and Me's uh, loggers. And uh, now there's no trees there. And uh, this is on Swanton Road. Uh, I'm just concerned about that, uh, like uh, the long-term effect. I, I don't think that PG&E should be able to wash their hands of uh, like uh, any future uh, responsibility because they did cut uh, very irresponsibly uh, like this uh, far away from any uh, fall line uh, that might uh, damage their uh, electrical uh, power lines. Great question, Great Andrea. Question, Andrea. I want to make sure I have a little bit of feedback here, so hopefully you guys can hear me. Uh, so I'll do my best to address your concerns and hopefully uh, feedback. Oh, there we go. I think that's good now. Thank you. Uh, so um, we, again, we did our best to identify trees that posed a hazard to our facilities and we mitigated those. And we understand that there were significant impacts to the, to the, the community, to our, our customers. And we certainly don't want any of our uh, response efforts to worsen the situation. And to that uh, uh, extent, you know, we did uh, many um, uh, areas. We went back in and whether it was uh, installing environmental BMPs on roadways that we had utilized or re-rocking roads that uh, uh, provided access to areas um, or, or repairing damage in other ways, you know, uh, we, we definitely um, did our best to, to return conditions to the best of our ability to, to what they were when, when we went in. So again, most of that would be centered around access. Uh, not, you know, we don't have, I can say we don't have a plan in place to necessarily replant in those areas. I, I, I guess we're all blessed with the fact that a lot of the trees that were impacted were redwoods and they're uh, resprouting species. And a lot of trees uh, that we did monitor and, and address and, and evaluate during the fire were deemed to be able to, uh, were deemed uh, healthy enough to to remain 
in proximity to our facilities. So we definitely were did our best to be um, discriminatory as far as like what trees we did have to address and remove and what trees um, we we were able to leave. So we, we, we um, actually made various um, assessments of that and gave trees the benefit of the doubt in many situations, especially large diameter trees. And, and then certainly most redwood trees we provided, we basically conducted multiple assessments to make sure that um, we, we only felled those trees that truly posed a risk to our facilities. Um. Andrea, I had to mute you there because your feedback was going, but um, hopefully that answered your question. There is another question from um, Becca in the in the chat. Um, it says, I really appreciate that you're now taking responsibility for the trees that were removed, many with no permission from landowners. Is this a policy that will be in place going forward or will there be another quote fight in the future for this kind of land stewardship to be honored? And I don't know if that's if there's been any changes in how PG is handling this and other with the fires this year or in general. Yeah, it, right now our primary focus has been providing wood management support on the 2020 wildfires and then shifting as appropriate to 2021 wildfires. I believe there was a CPUC uh, interaction between PG &E, um, and the CPUC that addressed specifically this 2020 wildfires. But again, like Rob mentioned, we want to be good partners here. We want to support our customers. We realize it's the wood that was left on, on the parcels in the CZU fire footprint has been an, a burden for customers. Some customers aren't able to, to rebuild and we certainly want to do our best to support um, helping out our customers and, and support rebuild efforts. Okay. Um... I don't see any other questions uh, in the Q&A portion. Uh, Andrea, you still have your hand raised, um, but I don't know if you have another follow-up question. So I will see if you do. I'll ask you to unmute. If you do have another question, um, you can go ahead and ask that. Um, if not, yeah, you're unmuted again. If you have another question. Um, can I just mention, uh... Uh, that um, I think, uh, sir, you you indicated that uh, that uh, many of these trees uh, were were fortunate that they were redwoods. Well, I didn't have any redwoods on my property. My property was mostly firs and oaks uh, and uh, madrone and manzanita uh, and uh, some pine. Uh, no redwoods on my property at all. All those trees were cut and the trees that you did not cut are coming back. I mean, there's growth, uh, actually regrowth uh, just this winter. These trees are coming back. And so a lot of those trees that you did cut on my property uh, were unnecessarily cut because uh, they, they, uh, they, they would have lived. Oh, many of them would have lived. Some of them might not have. But I was not given the choice of whether or not to cut the tree. This was decided by an arborist, supposedly. And I talked with the PG&E representative ar arborist, and uh, they said that the trees were all going to die. Well, they're not dead. They, they're not dead now. The ones that are still there, uh, many of the, the uh, fir trees are coming back. Uh, so I just, <laughs> I just don't understand that. Uh, uh, we're, we're talking about like trees that... Uh, I counted the tree rings in some of these uh, these uh, uh, logs, and uh, there's like over a hundred. These trees are over a hundred years old that uh, you cut. Uh, just uh, it, it broke my heart when I saw it uh, for the first time. You, know, you didn't let us in to Swanton Road uh, for a long, long time because of the danger, uh, and you were restoring your electric uh, power poles. But then when we did go, get to go in. We saw that uh, our land had been totally uh, like uh, clear cut, literally clear cut. Uh, and I think this is like a, this is more than just tree removal. This is this is something that uh, like uh, uh, borders on uh, of an extreme recklessness on the part of uh, the loggers and the people who cut these trees. They just went in and just like nilly willy just cut every single tree. And I think a lot of people share that opinion. 
Thank you, Andrea. I, I certainly, yeah, certainly appreciate that. We've got some feedback here again. I do appreciate your concern and I, I feel your concern and um, it basically, it breaks all of our hearts and a lot of beautiful forest was lost during the CZU incident. A lot of beautiful homes were lost and thankfully there wasn't a huge loss of life. And I, I can say this, that you know, in some ways, it sounds like it appears in discriminant to you. We, we were discriminating in, in the way we had identified the trees that we fell during the effort. We, we did have arborists make evaluations. We utilized, the, basically we utilized forest service guidelines to look at the cambion of the tree to determine the health of, of individual trees, the case by case basis. You'll probably notice that there were, in some cases, hatchet marks on, on the base of the trees to look at that and make that determination. And then uh, to your point about trees, some trees still being alive, that's true. Some trees still survived and could have survived and, and, and lived still, but those trees were, were in such a condition that we couldn't allow them to be there. We remove green hazard trees, living hazard trees of, from along our facilities every day. It's not to say that they are dead, but they are compromised to such an extent or have other defects to the extent that they pose a hazard to our facilities. So especially when it comes to oaks, you mentioned oaks, a lot of times oaks will re-sprout, but they also are, and it's great when they can live away from our facilities, but if a, an oak is in, I would say if it's in proximity to a residence and certainly if it's in proximity to our facilities, we would you know, have to make a determination of the, of the relative health and vigor of that tree post fire. And just because it, it, it was resprouting to a degree doesn't mean that that tree is something that we could leave in proximity to our facilities due to the potential hazard that it, it posed um, due to fire impacts. I hope that answers your question. Again, I, I know it, it definitely, there was a lot of uh, damage in, as a result of the fire and it, and it definitely breaks all of our hearts to see what happened. Okay. Um... Now, I want to make sure Yana has had their hand up again. I, um, I'm going to just ask you to unmute if you have another follow-up question, and then um, we'll see if we can start to, to wind down for the evening on uh, for everybody's time. But uh, Yana, I'm going to ask you to unmute again. If you still have a question, or if that's an old hand that was still raised. Looks like that might still be an old hand. Um, Mr. Tischler, uh, um, well, I'll have you uh, one, maybe one more question if you still have one. I know you lowered your hand and then raised it again. Or here's Yana. Yana was able to unmute. Did you have a question? Oh, sorry. No, I did not. I, I thought I was muting myself. I thought I'd okay. been mute. Sorry. Unmute. Right. I mean, mute me, please. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, Mr. Tischler, uh, did you have one last question, maybe? Just a comment uh, based on that, uh, what uh, Mr. Smith uh, mentioned. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, some of those, tr those trees might not have made it, but it's my property, and I should make that call, not you. Uh, you just because there was a fire there, and those trees that were not in the fall line of the uh, power lines or the telephone poles, uh, I make that call. You don't make that call. It's my property. You don't have the right to go onto my property and just cut trees down that you've determined was, that you determined were uh, not going to live. Uh, I, I don't understand that. It's just, it just seems like this is a, a a gross violation of our uh, right, our property rights as owners. I've owned that property since a long time, 40 years, okay? So uh, now the property looks completely different and uh, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna get redwood starts, I'll start over again, but this is, uh, this was not right to, to do that kind of thing. And I don't know how to make it right because the damage is done, the trees are down, the trees are down, down on the ground. So, you know, there's nothing we can do at this point. Uh, I don't know where, where to go from here, but I'm not happy. And I think there are a lot of people that are in the same category that I am. I'm sorry, I'm, I'll, I'll shut up right now. Thank you for cutting the trees. I appreciate it. And uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tischler. And 
you know, I, I do agree with you that we don't have the right to come onto your property and just take your, your property that has, you know, basically cut down trees that have nothing to do or that pose no threat to our facilities that are situated to the extent that they are so far off of the right of way that there's no way they can impact our, our facilities. I certainly hope we didn't do that. It sounds like we should probably follow up with you to see what happened on your particular property. So I, I'd like you to please contact us, either call the number or use that wildfire email address. Um, again, we do our best to identify trees that pose threats to our facilities. We have a, 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 a duty to do that. Uh, the CPUC mandates that utilities do that, that we remove hazards from our facilities. So it is our responsibility to do that. That said, we, we like to do that to the best of our ability in concurrence with our, our customers, with property owners. Sometimes during fire events, because of the nature of an emergency, we don't always have the luxury of communicating with the property owner or our customers before we do that you know, immediate hazard tree work because of the nature of the emergency. Yeah, thanks, Joel, and, and we do appreciate it. And if you want us to look at that a little more, a little more closely, um, please go ahead and give us an email, and we'll follow up with you. Um, we we do. Uh, we do respect our customers, as Joel said, and we want to make sure we're doing right by them. And again, in an emergency situation, we're doing the best that we can for the safety of our crews, the safety of the firefighters in the area, customers in our facilities. So, um, but we do want to make sure we're doing right. So we'll follow up with you if you could go ahead and uh, uh, either call the number or uh, email us. But appreciate your time. Yeah, with, with that, there are no further written questions in the Q&A portion, um, and we've addressed both hands raised. So um, again, thank, uh, as, as Rob and Joel have said, thank you everyone for your time this evening. Um, again, the deadline to opt in is the end of this month. Please let your neighbors know. Um, the county website form is quick and easy to fill out. And uh, we hope everybody uh, is able to opt in that, that chooses and wants to opt in to get that wood, wood debris removed. So with that, unless Rob, Rob or Joel, you want any closing comments? That's it. I just really want to thank the county for their partnership on this. Great job on that website. And, um, and thank you, Joel, uh, for being here. Appreciate it. And thank you all. We, we want to do right by our customers. We appreciate your time. And please let your neighbors know. Uh, they may not know. They may not have seen all the communication. And you, you probably have the closest contact with them. So let them know that this program is available. And with that, have a, have a good night and be safe. Thank you.